few reasons why this can be kind of a trap for us. We feel this pressure to ship something. And there's problems with that because sometimes it can be sloppy. Sometimes it's not meant to be consumed by the public. Most importantly, we might not be ready for any type of feedback or criticism. Hi, my name is Damon Brown of DamonBrown.net. My main thing is helping you as a side hustler, a solopreneur, otherwise a non-traditional entrepreneur. Today we're gonna to talk about shipping, specifically a great quote from Steve Jobs that is, that is often misinterpreted. If it doesn't ship, then it doesn't really exist. Or more specifically what he said, real artists ship. That's true and not true. Let's dissect what Steve Jobs actually meant and how that can actually apply to your life. Bring your worst show. If you're digging this type of programming when it comes to side hustlers, solopreneurs, productivity, work-life balance, and things of that nature, be sure to subscribe. I'm here every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for you at 11.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, Vegas time. If you're liking the content or if you have other people that might like it, be sure to share it with them. Give a like so people can, can learn more about it on the platform because it does help the algorithm. And be sure and comment if there's something that really resonates with you or if something you really disagree with. Speaking of disagreeing, Steve Jobs, we were in Silicon Valley at the same time. I was actually there in Silicon Valley when he passed away. So I know how revered he was. One of the things that he talked about is real artistship. And he talked about it in regards to, of course, being the co-founder and legendary startup person who was behind Apple. Apple was known for shipping things. They created things and they went out the door. There's something called vaporware, which means people hyping up things with press releases saying they're gonna do these great things. It happens in the artist community too. My background is journalism and authorship. And we say we're gonna do these great things and then the book never ships, right? <laughs> then we never hear the music. I'm looking at you, Kanye West. There's a lot of folks who have this big hype machine around things and they don't quite get there. Or if they get there, it's way past when the audience is interested. Steve Jobs, so many quotes that he had, but his biggest one is real artist ship. You might've heard this from Seth Godin too, who's a mentor of mine. There's so much truth to this, but it's a little bit deeper than that. Real artist ship basically means that if you're just creating something in the basement, but you never share it with anyone, then you're not really doing the work of getting feedback, of shipping the, what they call the minimal viable product, as in getting something out the door and getting feedback and then refining it. But there's a few reasons why this can be kind of a trap for us. We feel this pressure to ship something and there's problems with that because sometimes it can be sloppy. Sometimes it's not meant to be consumed by the public. Most importantly, we might not be ready for any type of feedback or criticism. Uh, recently, we're dealing with Hurricane Ida, which just hit New Orleans on the anniversary of Hurricane Katrina. I actually evacuated New Orleans when I lived down there when Hurricane Katrina hit. It took me 15 years now to write about Hurricane Katrina, my experience down there, in the book, Build From Now, How to Know Your Power, See Your Abundance and Nourish the World. I was not ready to write about it back in 2005. I was ready to write about it now. I've done keynotes and articles and stuff about it. It took me almost 14 years to be able to write about it. So it's not saying that real artists, you're not a real artist if you're not ready to talk about something, reveal something, add something to the collective consciousness to the conversation. That doesn't mean that you're not a real artist, but it does mean a few other things. And we're gonna break down what real artistship really means. So number one, Real artistship means that you don't have to like it. What I mean by that is when I think about, also mentioned in uh, the new book, again, Built From Now, I, I talk about Alex Haley, and he's famous, of course, for the book Roots, which came out around the time I was born in the mid 70s. And he worked on that manuscript for seven, eight years, maybe nine years, to the point where the agent who he was, he was writing for, the agent that represented the, the publishing company and him, actually threatened him unless he was actually gonna get the manuscript to the publishing company. He had to pry the manuscript out of Mr. Haley's hands, literally. You can read about it again in Built From Now or in some of the Playboy archives, which is where I excerpted the article. The thing is that whatever we're doing, it's never going to be perfect, ever. I've done two startups. First one was called So Quotable. Whew, you can read about that in, in uh, my bestseller, The Bite Size Entrepreneur, but I created that. At the same time, I became primary caregiver of my wife and I's first child. So when my son was four months old, all the way to when he was one, 
I ended up shipping this app that collected people's quotes. It was quite a journey, very intense. I did the whole thing myself, bootstrapped it. It was a crazy endeavor, but it worked out okay. Turned into my first TED Talk, and then the rest ended up being history and ended up leading to my second app called Cuddler, which we ended up selling with two co-founders and became the reason why a lot of y'all end up hearing about me. The point is, is that both of those apps were not perfect at all. In fact, the first version of Cuddler, which connected people for hugs, within a week, we ended up having 100,000 users and 10,000 completed cuddles or hugs, which was the point of the app, to connect people for hugs. It was far from perfect. In fact, it was just a step beyond beta testing. But we didn't think that 10,000 people were gonna hug on it. We didn't think that 100,000 people would come in the first week. We had no idea that success was waiting for us. But what if we never shipped it? There are so many issues with the app that we didn't like. It was a fine app, but there's so many things we wanted to improve. And we're like, let's get this out the door and then we'll improve it later. <laughs> but the timing of what the Wall Street Journal, well, we had our cover story on there. Amazing, amazing as a journalist to actually be on the cover of the Wall Street Journal. I'm um, so used to being on the other side interviewing people. The Wall Street Journal made us a cover story and said we were creating the cuddle economy, January of 2015. If we were in a different space, if we end up waiting until things were perfect, maybe we would have, have missed that opportunity to create the cuddle economy. Because pop culture wise, which is my study, it was perfect timing. But the second level of that though, is that if we were waiting till it was perfect, we would have never shipped. And the opportunity would have been lost. I wouldn't have my best selling book, The Bites of the Entrepreneur. I wouldn't be a coach to hundreds of people. We wouldn't be talking right now. None of this would exist. Literally none of this. It's okay for your product or your service not to be perfect. You don't have to like it through and through. It doesn't have to be ideal. In fact, as they talk about in the minimal viable product idea, which was popularized by Eric Reese in his book called The Lean Startup, you want to get something out so you can get feedback from the public. That public might be your mom. That public might be a trusted friend. That public, that public might be an advisor. It doesn't have to be the internet. <laughs> the internet can be a dangerous place. So it doesn't have to be that big. It could be just sharing it with another individual. Even if you don't share with another individual though, it doesn't have to be perfect. When we say real artistship, it means creating something and standing behind it, even though it's not perfect. Secondly, Always keep in mind, in most cases, it won't be the last thing that you do. I was just at a major talk over at a journalism or a writing conference called Hippocamp. And we are talking about how there's so much pressure. When I speak to a lot of these writing conferences, I, I talk to writers and there's so much pressure for their first novel, first major article in like the New York, their first nonfiction book, which is what I specialize in. There's a lot of pressure, not only because it's their first time doing it, but they think it's gonna be their last time doing it. They think it's their last shot. I got a book deal and oh my gosh, if I screw this up, I'm never gonna get a book deal again. Oh my gosh, I'm writing an article for the first time. If I don't get this article perfect, it's not gonna happen. The fact is, is that once you do a book, once you do an article, it actually gets easier to do your next one. My 26th book called Career Remix, Get the Gig You Want, based on the skills you've got, Again, it's my 26th book. I've only been writing books for 15 years. 26 books. When I wrote my first book, <laughs> I could have swore it was gonna be my last book. That first book took me five years. That's probably part of the reason why it took me five years. So I'm speaking from experience. When you think about real artistship and that famous quote from Steve Jobs, it means that you ship it out the door, doing it at your highest capacity. And that's enough and you trust in the process that you'll get a chance to do it again. Because many of the things that we stress over, we actually are gonna get another opportunity. Number three, real artistship does not mean you have to sell it. You do not have to sell it. You can give it away, you can showcase it, you can, again, share it with your inner circle, and that's it. You don't have to do all that stuff. You don't have to have a promotional campaign. You don't have to set up your website for sales. You don't have to raise money or bootstrap as I did to create to create a startup. You don't have to go that deep. Shipping means packaging something and considering it done. Done enough. Not perfect enough, done enough. That will free you from 
as Brene Brown says, those issues of guilt as far as feeling like you can do better and those issues of shame where you're worried that other people are gonna judge you because you think you should have done better. You can avoid both of those by understanding that it doesn't have to hit a certain standard other than your own. Sometimes when you end up selling something, when you put a price tag on it, when you say you're gonna have a major showing of it, it puts so much undue pressure on yourself that actually makes the final product worse. I talk to people about this all the time where they have a particular hobby that they like or an idea that they could spend all day with and they wanna turn that into the profession. But as soon as it becomes your profession, then suddenly there's another set of pressures. Me speaking to you, me coaching, you know, with my little blazer on, me doing these books. This is part of how I feed myself and my family. That feels a little different than when I was in grad school and I was paying someone else through my student loans and my fellowships and so forth to learn about the stuff that I'm doing now. There's levels to this, as they say. Sometimes there's undue pressure, particularly if you don't have to, to go to these levels where maybe just creating is enough. And so real artistship doesn't mean getting your first gallery and people are buying your art. It doesn't mean that there's a million streams that are, that are being downloaded of your, of your latest album. What it means is that you create. It means, as Seth Godin says, you go through the process. And going through the process and shipping, creating, finishing it, putting it away or giving it to someone else, and then starting over again, that's where the magic happens. Now, I love money. I love being on the stage, but that nothing compares to finishing a book and shipping it, no matter who's reading it. If you want more insight into the artist practice, the creative practice, which at the end of the day, we're all creatives, aren't we? Be sure and check out my free playlist at youtube.com slash Brown Damon. You can uh, check out the playlist called uh, um, Smart Routines and Habits about a dozen videos, all free. They'll give you insights into creating the life, whether you have little kids at home like I do, or you're an older adult, or you're juggling a million different things. You can find ways to build a career around the lifestyle that you have. Hopefully I do that with my new book built from now. Hopefully I can do that for you through this channel, and particularly through that playlist of routines and habits. Until next time, remember you can always bring your worth that you can always build from now. Take care.